Guys, I cannot thank you enough. I mean, a thousand subscribers. That is just absolutely... I must admit, I didn't think much of Francis the first time I laid eyes on him. Looked like a stiff breeze would blow him over. But today, eight months and 17 videos later, I am honored to be the first guest on his YouTube channel. On Francis's behalf, I would like to say thank you, truly, for 1,000 subscribers. And if you haven't already done so, get busy subscribing or get busy dying. Let's kick off the Q&A. I was quite scared to do this. My anxiety brain thought that I was going to get no questions. So thank you so much to all of you who have submitted me questions, even if you are a mate who I've asked to submit me one. First up is this Donny called Thomas Burke, he asks, what would be one thing you would tell your fresher self? Uh, freshers was a very stressful time for me for a number of reasons, and there are probably more personal things that I tell my fresher self than others. The most important thing would be that stop shopping at Sainsbury's. If you head northeast from central Cambridge uh, towards Mill Road, you end up at the Beehive Centre, which is a retail park with a big juicy Asda and you just start shopping there instead of Sainsbury's. Also, my background lighting is green today at James's request. However, that is also the color of Asda. Uh, Asda are not sponsoring this video, but if you are working at Asda and would like to get in touch about promotion, then please do so. Love what you're doing. Ritvik asks, would you say you have any regrets from your time at university? One thing at Cambridge would be, if you've watched Ali Abdal videos, which can be very addictive if you want to unlock the secrets of productivity. In Ali Abdal's more laid back videos he talks about having a door stop uh, at university and just propping your door open as much as possible to encourage people to come in and say hi. I wish I'd done that more because I really like alone time, coming back to my room, shutting my door, just blocking out the world but I think looking back maybe also because the pandemic's made socializing very difficult that's probably something I would have done more but I'm still at university so plenty more regrets to make, I'm sure. Uh, next question is from Spartan. I remember you Spartan from the Football Index days. Uh, thanks for <laughs> sticking around as the contents transition from gambling to Cambridge. But anyway, now that you finish uni, what are your plans and what kind of jobs are you looking at? I have put off looking at jobs entirely for two years by deciding to do a master's. I'm doing a master's at UCL now and it's a course called Developmental Psychology and Clinical Practice which is, as you might expect, more psychology but orientated towards becoming a clinical psychologist and I think after the master's probably be looking at jobs in that field, so assistant psychologist, uh, clinical psychologist, but it's insanely competitive so I don't know how that's going to go. Speaking of my master's, Anushka asks, my question to you is how do you balance making YouTube videos while doing a full-time MSc? I think in life you know you've got You've got work, you've got hobbies, you've got sleep, you've got your social life, just things, all those things to balance. And for me, the one that usually falls by the wayside is social life. And I had an excuse during the lockdowns while uh, there was absolutely no obligation to socialize to start making videos in February. But since lockdowns have lifted and socializing has become more of a thing, I would say I balance the YouTube and the MSc by using YouTube as a procrastination tool that feels not quite like normal procrastination, you know, watching Netflix or something. It's like I'm sat here talking to the camera now and I have lots of stuff to do for my masters, but I can tell myself that making a YouTube video is just really, it's a productive thing. I'll put that question back to you, Anushka. You know, how do you balance watching Should Desi romance songs uh, and doing that full time MSc? <laughs> Massimo asks, did you attend Cambridge only because of its reputation? or did you really like it? Big up to your sister, by the way, for showing you one of my videos. So if I'm honest, reputation was an important thing. Obviously, reputations don't always match up to your actual experience. And I know people who didn't have a good time at Cambridge, but in general, like reputation isn't based on nothing at all. And it's kind of earned over a long period. Even though I feel like reputation shouldn't play that big of a role in your decision of what you need to attend, I must say I feel like that did play a role for me, so who am I to advise otherwise? <laughs> Ironically, after I started at Cambridge, it dropped to like third or fourth in the league table for psychology. What made you want to do psychology? You know, the classic, I want to help people, you know, I want to be Mother Teresa kind of thing. I don't think anyone gets up and is like, I don't want to help people. Maybe my landlord actually. 
I think helping people is a good motivator, but also the fact that working in psychology, to get a little deep and philosophical, we're all here and trying to be happy and taking our own routes to get there. But then studying psychology, you're studying the mind, which is like the very object that happiness comes from. So it's almost like the most direct way to try and be happy. I hope that makes sense. Also, like being around people with mental health issues. Mental health issues suck. They're not going anywhere anytime soon. So there will be psychology work that he's doing. Aaron asks, what advice can you give to someone who's been dealing with quarter life crisis? <laughs> I feel like I'm still in it, to be honest. I need advice. Can someone give me advice about dealing with quarter life crisis? Becoming an adult is just, oh, life becomes after undergrad so much more open. Like your options open up so much. You're in school, it's a conveyor belt. Most people go to uni and then after that, the world's your oyster kind of thing. That is both very liberating, but also terrifying. I would probably lean towards the latter. Oh, yeah, it's kind of scary what to do. So maybe this YouTube channel is a product of quarter life crisis. Pros and cons of studying psychology. I'll probably make a video about that. By the way, what is your other nationality besides from British? Thanks a lot in advance. You're welcome in advance. Uh, I'm half British half Chinese Indonesian. I don't speak either Chinese or Indonesian, bane of my life, but that explains my face, I guess. Neil asks, how much free time do Cambridge students get, specifically land economy? How much free time do we get? Mm, not much, to be honest. And then it comes to applying for jobs and they ask, what have you been doing outside of your course? But then at Cambridge, you kind of fucked yourself a bit by signing up to do a course that occupies 90% of your time. In essay subjects, work your essays around doing something extracurricular, bit of sport, bit of mix across. I, I didn't meet a single land economist at Cambridge, so I'm not sure. Maybe that's a sign that they had no free time and they are the doing the hardest course of all. But then again, land economies, is that BTEC economics? Who knows? Have I just fired some, some shots there? No, I don't know. I don't know how land economy is. What do you think about having a part-time job while at Cambridge? Uh, it can't be that intense of a job. Otherwise, you are not going to have time to do work. So I'm going to make a video about that as well. T asks, how do you fill in the SAQ? SAQ is the Supplementary Application Questionnaire, which Cambridge asks you for more information after you submitted your UCAS, just, just to be extra. I sent in my application two days ago, and when I saw that I could add extra info, I freaked out. Currently having a breakdown help. Uh, when's the SAQ due? Twenty second of shit. I, I might have missed that boat there. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> Lola asks, "Have you managed to stay in touch with friends from secondary school, sixth form, college?" Yes, I have. I think it gets more difficult, obviously, because you're not in school every day, and you're going to unis all over the country, doing jobs all over the country or abroad, whatever. So it's harder to find the time, but I still do. And if you're both willing to put the effort in to see each other, then it's calm. Juan has won the prize for most thorough questioning. He's asked five questions, each with multiple questions within them. Really appreciate the engagement, Juan. Question one, yeah, as you say, psychology. I have a lot of thoughts about it, so I will make a video on that soon. Do you think the Cambridge colleges are very different to each other? Yes. Uh, so that's in my Reflecting on My Time at Cambridge video. Basically just read the Telegraph's table, and if you can't get past the paywall, definitely do not use the Zappa feature and our blocker to get around that. Did you make any good friends during your time at Cambridge? Uh, yeah, I think so. I feel like I always get into my head about it, like, does everyone hate me, etc. But I think I did. We still keep in touch now. When I had 20 subscribers, they were probably the majority. Safi asks, have you ever considered being a stand-up comedian? I did one reaction video, so I think that's a bit, <laughs> it's a bit of a leap. And it's also terrifying, the thought of trying that. Although, maybe one day, because I'm trying public speaking club at the moment. Yeah, stand-up comedian, let's, uh, let's hold our horses for now, yeah? Big essay question. Is psychotherapy worth pursuing as a first career? Well, that's what I'm doing, even though I didn't do classics as you say. Don't invalidate yourself. I think people can choose it as a second career because being a psychotherapist in a way relies on you having life experience, especially if you're treating adults, then their worries might be things as someone in your 20s you have absolutely no experience with, divorce, mortgages. I get that perspective on, you know, having someone 
who is much older and has accumulated life experience before going into psychotherapy. But then again, I think working with adolescents now on my masters, I'm not too far removed from that generation that I can't relate to them anymore. And I think there's value in that. Everyone has a preference for the psychotherapist they want. It's the same way someone would want to see a woman or a man. Some people would want to see someone a bit older or a bit younger. Basically, don't let the career stage you're at stop you. Callum asks, as a Manchester City fan, do you fear, welcome or dismiss the Newcastle United takeover? And if Newcastle win the Champions League before City, will I be safe? Callum Manchester here seems to be a fan of a team that isn't from Manchester. Don't know what's going on there. But as to my feelings about the takeover of Newcastle, I am welcoming it as long as Newcastle don't overtake Manchester City. And will you be safe as a Newcastle fan? I don't know about that, but apparently you'll always be welcome in Saudi Arabia. Diska, Diska asks, is sports psychology a field you're particularly interested in? Yeah, I think so. It's fascinating, like, watching, for example, penalty shootout at the end of the Euros this year, which I preempted by making a video about penalties. Although I did say that strikers tend to score more penalties than defenders, which Marcus Rashford kind of making me look bad there. Yeah, definitely. It's just so weird. Kicking a ball, hitting a ball, so much psychology behind it. And they also ask what about making videos on your current uni, which is a very good point. I am looking back on Cambridge now, even though it was over a year ago. And I would say that I'll keep you posted because I haven't actually been into UCL until like last week, even though I've been studying there for a year technically. Watch this space. Why did you choose your current masters? Aside from the reputation of UCL and the Anna Freud Center, in clinical psychology. My master's has a placement in CAMS, which is the Children and Adolescent Mental Health Service in the UK. That is the placement I'm doing literally now, just started it. And hopefully it's gonna give me some good uh, work experience in psychology to take me into a career in it. So let's see how that goes. What interests you most in the curriculum? Probably this placement so far and just kind of finally getting to lift my head out of textbooks and academic papers and start being in the real world for once. Katie's left an incredibly kind comment. Thank you so much, Katie. I'm writing a personal statement for a master's. Undergrad personal statements are very unique. You know, you're applying to a few unis. Some of the unis might have a slightly different course you're applying to. You have to both tailor it to the subjects, but keep it open enough to apply to all the unis. Whereas applying to a master's, applying to a job, all your personal statements are directly tailored towards the thing you're applying for. I guess in that sense, it might be a bit easier in a way. Every personal statement you write, you get a little bit better at writing them. So probably just don't sweat it. Charles asks, would you rather go to Oxford or study land economy? <sighs> Lesser of two evils, that isn't it? Now I don't have a beef with land economy or, or even Oxford to be fair. I mean, because I didn't see a single land economist at Cambridge and I probably saw more Oxford students than land economists at Cambridge, that would suggest that land economists are either, from what the course name implies, either Mr. Monopoly, or they are being worked to the bone, can never see the light of day. So I'm gonna have to say Oxford on that. Maya asks, will you marry me? So one, my college husband Lloyd won't be very happy with that. Second, more than 50% of marriages end in divorce. So it's not, it's not great odds. It's not great odds for us, Maya. On a similar meaningful note, Rory asks, would you rather have arms for legs or legs for arms? I guess a lot of variables there. How long are the arms? How long are the legs when they are? You know, is it a miniature leg on your arm? And how strong would they be? You know, could your arms actually hold you up if they were your legs? I don't know. I just feel like having hands is kind of important. So let's go with arms for legs. The college husband himself has a question which is what's your editing process and 10K by the end of the year. So let's put the second one to one side because that's not happening. But my editing process is basically using the Adobe Creative Suite, Audition and Premiere. It's weird watching my YouTube videos back on my channel. It's all edited so that I'm just speaking without hesitation the whole way through a video for 10, 15 minutes at a time. Uh, whereas filming now, I do so many takes of so many things I wanna say because I can't get it out first time. People who can film a whole video in one take, like a 20 minute YouTube video, 
it just blows my mind how you can do that because you have to cut out so many pauses. There's not really much room to breathe unless you edit and make jump cuts. I don't know, I'm chatting shit now. For a 10, 15 minute video, it can easily be an hour, an hour 30 of uncut footage, which I need to remove the silences, removing the bad takes. Realize that he is also when it actually <laughs> At the end, you have one condensed version of footage, heavily cut together to make me seem somewhat coherent. So Silhouette asks, any effective way to fall asleep quickly? Uh, I guess if you're watching this video now, probably don't, don't do that. Like get off your phone. Yeah, sleep hygiene, no screens. I can't even, I can't even honestly preach that because I don't practice any of these things, but I think it does help to go to sleep at the same time every day. Even if you have nothing to do today, it's a good idea to have a set time when you're meant to fall asleep and your body can get used to that. But if you are watching this video right now before going to bed, then come back and watch me again tomorrow during the day. What's the best advice you've ever heard? Oh, fuck. Um, don't get attached too much to any one quote. I feel like so many quotes I read and then I'm like, I feel amazing after reading this. I feel so motivated. And the important thing is that you hold on to that feeling rather than the words in the quote themselves. I don't think they're actually that important, but how it makes you feel and what it makes you want to go and do. Hold on to that. So in that sense, it doesn't really matter any quote I give you. That said, this is from Matt Haig, who has written a lot of books about depression and getting out of a mental rut. Look at the sky, remind yourself of the cosmos, seek vastness at every opportunity in order to see the smallness of yourself. I've really hung on to that quote because it really encapsulates how I feel going into nature, hiking, or, or being on a plane, just somewhere where you feel very small and the world around you feels so big. I find that quite like freeing. You know, any individual mistake I make, thing I mess up, in the grand scheme of things, in the whole world, is not that deep. <laughs> any tips for high school? Honestly, just get through it. Like someone told me high school is something that you're not meant to enjoy is something you're just meant to get through. That resonated with me far more than the advice that high school's the best years of your life. I didn't find that at all. So hang in there, basically. <laughs> Ahmed asks, what do you attribute your recent YouTube success to and advice for someone starting out apart from fame jacking Cambridge? Excuse me. Right. I don't even know fame jacking is a word, but it sounds pretty. It sounds pretty intense. There are a billion analytics I could show you, but as for fame jack in Cambridge, right? I uploaded this video. What is it? 17th of June. First day, 28 views. By the end of August, this had 116 views. And it's only recently, I think with the start of application season, freshers, that it got into the algorithm. And there is nothing I did between this point and this point that was revolutionary. It literally just started to happen for me there. So on that basis, it's not even like putting Cambridge in a title will guarantee you views. The real lesson of this is just to keep showing up. You know, after I made that reaction video, it was three months before it started getting more views than just my mates. Between those times, I continued to make videos, even though each one was getting about 50 views. And I don't know, maybe this one will get 50 views. But the point is you keep showing up. And as long as you make no videos, the chances of you getting into the YouTube algorithm are zero. And every video you make, even if it adds 0.01% chance, still greater than what you had before. Plus you're continuing to build your skills in editing, talking to a camera. All right, that's basically all the questions. So to use my own voice rather than a Fiverr impressionist, thank you so much to every single one of you who has subscribed recently and to any of you who have returned to watch this video, this q and I still can't believe how quickly this has all happened, honestly. There's a video where I said I was aiming to hit 100 subscribers by the end of the year, and now it's 2,000. Like 2,000, I cannot believe that. Thank you to all of you who've left such lovely comments on my videos as well. I do read them all and I try to reply to as many as I can, but I'm sorry if I don't manage to get around to you. I hope you enjoyed this q and I know it's very different from my usual content. Let me know if you would like me to do another one or something similar at the next milestone and I will see you next week with another video.